Hello, Patriots, and welcome again to Patriot Point. Have so much news for you this week. All I can say is... Prepare to be amazed. Yes, prepare to be amazed. You're going to get news and analysis here that you will not find on the lamestream media. Well, we've got a lot of things going on this week, but before we get into the news, I want to mention one thing. And first of all, that's a big thank you to all of the subscribers. We now have 7,990 subscribers, just shy of that 8,000 mark. Hope to get that hopefully this week. So thank you all very much. It's a great encouragement to me to know there are so many other liberty-minded people that are starting to stand up in Kentucky. When I first started this channel, sometimes I felt quite alone, just to tell you the truth. I was reminded of that Bible story where Elijah thought he is the only one. And God reminded him, no, I have 7,000 that I preserved under myself. Well, we see God not only has 7,000 in Kentucky, it's about to be 8,000. And I think there's a whole lot more of us out there. If you never have subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Well, now let's talk about some of the news that we've got going on this week. We're going to handle three big topics. First of all, we're going to talk about critical race theory and the attack to push this in Kentucky and who is pushing back and what you can do about it. Second, we're going to talk about the Second Amendment. It's under attack in Kentucky, but who is stepping up to defend against it and what you can do about it. And third, we're going to talk about Andy Bashir and how he just got whipped by the United States Supreme Court. First of all, let's talk about critical race theory here in Kentucky. This is a term that you're hearing a lot on the different media outlets. Sometimes it's abbreviated CRT. So first of all, what is critical race theory? This is the idea that America is inherently racist and therefore we must destroy this system and replace it with an entirely new one. First of all, I completely reject critical race theory. First of all, if America was inherently racist, why did it elect Barack Obama not once, but twice? That wouldn't happen if America was inherently racist. I don't like this idea of destroying all of America's systems and trying to replace them with something else. Again, that's something Obama tried to do. He's tried to basically rewrite the history books. And that's a lot of the problems that we have right now with this critical race theory. They want to rewrite the history books and change it. Well, I'm happy to tell you that there's three things going on that you can do to help them not rewrite the history books and to push back against critical race theory, which all it really is, is sanctioned racism. Racism is wrong no matter which race that it is against, and that includes the white race as well. Racism is wrong. So what can you do about this? There has been not one, but two, yes, count them, two different bills that have already been written by Kentucky state legislators to say Kentucky public schools will not teach critical race theory. One of these bills is called BR60, written by House Representative Joe Fisher. The other one is bill request or BR69 by uh, Kentucky State Representative Matt Lockett. So these things handle the same topic, slightly different wording to them to stop this from being taught in Kentucky public schools. And while that is great, there's a problem with these two bills, is that they cannot be introduced to even be voted on until the legislature goes back into session in January. And when they go back into session, it's got to go through the committee process of the Senate and the House, and then uh, go up to the floor in each, and then it goes to the governor, and he'll probably veto it, and then they'll override him. So by the time all of this process gets done, it's probably going to be about April of next year when this actually gets made into law if they do approve it. And so think about that. If it doesn't go into effect until next April, well, school starts this fall, which means kids will already have a whole semester of that this year, and then they got the spring semester, and they'll only be within a month or so of having school out. There could be a whole year of this racist, critical race theory being taught here in Kentucky schools. So we need to do something even before these bills could possibly become a law. I am proud to report to you that in Gallatin County, Kentucky, which is in the northern part of our state, that some parents showed up at the uh, county school board meeting saying, listen, we want you guys to make sure this, is, this racism is not taught in our schools. And so the Gallatin County School uh, District, they voted unanimously to say, 
Sure enough, this is just sanctioned racism. We will not teach critical race theory. So the kids in Gallatin County, Kentucky, are being protected from this very false uh, history and racist teaching. So what can you do about it? We need parents and patriots throughout Kentucky to go to your county's uh, school board meetings and to do the same thing. Say, listen, this thing is wrong. It is nothing but trying to sanction racism. We don't want this rewriting of American history. And you show up in numbers and let's speak up and let's protect Kentucky students from this racist ideology. That is something going on and something that you can do about it. That leads us to our next topic, which is the Second Amendment. That is your right to keep and to bear arms. And I think this is incredibly important. So much more so as the left is trying to defund the police, I think you're going to be able to be able to have be a good shot, defend your own life, your own family, your own home. Now, talking about the Second Amendment, before we get into the news, that reminds me. I'm sponsoring an event this coming up next Saturday, not this week, but next week. It is called the Great Kentucky Shootout and Picnic. And I've got a link to the Facebook event page in the description of this video. Uh, it's going to be held in Lancaster, Kentucky. A friend of mine owns a gun range down there, the Sugar Creek Gun Range. And I hope you come out. The whole event will be free. We're going to have some bluegrass music, some gospel music. Uh, and we've got a lot of giveaways as well. Uh, let me tell you about some of the giveaways. I had a Kentucky-based company contact me and said, hey, we're all for this, and we want to make the day even more special. And it's the Mingyu of Beef Jerky people. And they are not sponsoring this video. They're not giving me one red cent or anything. They did send me a box of stuff to give 100% of it all the way to people who show up that day. So I hope you'll show up. We, they sent us, first of all, a bunch of beef jerky. And again, this is a Kentucky-based company. So I think we are able to support Kentucky businesses. Uh, so we got a lot of bags of beef jerky we'll give away. They've got these patriotic t-shirts that say Mingua Beef Jerky. Uh, they've got these blankets. I like these blankets. And they sent several of these. Not only does it have the name of their company, but it's got a scripture reference. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, saying, Honor God in everything that you do. They also sent us this little pink hat that we can give away with our logo. Now, let me just say, I ain't wearing no pink hat. <laughs> I'll give this away to maybe some lady, somebody else, but uh, Lee ain't wearing no pink hat. Uh, the other thing they're giving us, uh, they give several of these uh, bags, and these are insulated bags. It would be great for uh, if you got like uh, some RC, Pepsi. Uh, I wouldn't put Coke in there because I don't like Coke. They're, they are racist. Uh, maybe some good ice cream to bring to the picnic. So this is going to be the Great Kentucky Shootout and Picnic, June the 26th from 11 till about 2 o'clock. Well, we have free music, lots of giveaways. If you want to enter the shootout contest, that'll be $20 a shooter. And we have Ops Supply, a gun shop, is going to be giving away $100 gift certificates for the best shot. So uh, make sure you visit the event page on the Facebook. I'll put the link in the description, and I hope it'll be a great, wonderful day. Uh, just come out, enjoy some fellowship, enjoy your Second Amendment rights, and let's just enjoy being together again, even though that's something that's been banned now for the last year and a half. Now, speaking of the Second Amendment, first of all, uh, let's talk about it has been under attack in Kentucky. For the last two or three years, Kentucky has had one of our own state senators who has proposed one of these basically red flag laws saying if you have been, a, if you think that somebody might be committing a crime and they might use a gun, then you could go to a judge and the judge could order all those persons' guns to be taken away. Now there's some problems with this. First of all, the person who is being denied their Second Amendment rights who is having all of their guns taken away, hasn't committed a crime. All that's happened is somebody went to a judge and said, I think sometime in the future this person might commit a crime and they might use a gun. So you have somebody who has committed no crime, not even being accused of actually doing anything, and they're having their Second Amendment rights denied and basically being robbed of their own private property. So I'm happy to say that that senator who keeps proposing this has been pressured by, uh, first of all, Kentucky Congressman Thomas Massey uh, and many others, and that person says they will not be seeking re-election anymore. Well, that's something good for gun rights owners. 
So we're already seeing some people step up to say, I want to take this position. Let me introduce you to the first one that has said that they would like to have that job. This is a person by the name of Mr. Aaron Reed, and he'll be filing to be this new Kentucky state senator to replace the outgoing one up there in Frankfurt, and uh, happens to be a gun store owner. So I think we know his position on this particular issue. And as we start to see other people who file for this, we'll introduce you to them and we'll be examining their positions as we get a lot closer to election day next year. Now let's talk about, first of all, the Second Amendment. Uh, a lot of the anti-gun crowd likes to say, well, the Founding Fathers had muskets in mind when they said you were allowed to, open, uh, to own a gun. No, they didn't. Where are they getting that from? That is not written in the Constitution anywhere. And so we have the Second Amendment being written, and guns had been around for hundreds of years. Hundreds of years. And, of course, over that four or five hundred years, the guns had already been invented. They were continually being refined, continually being improved. Nothing in the Second Amendment is about the type of gun all the Second Amendment is, is a restraint upon the government saying you cannot take away the people's rights to own guns. And they knew guns would continue to improve to get better because they'd been around for hundreds of years and were already doing that. Rather ridiculous notion to say they only meant muskets. Now let's talk about one other thing, talking about Kentucky businesses and the Second Amendment and our rights. Did you know that in the state of West Virginia, starting on July the 1st, that guns and ammunition will have zero sales tax? This is because of a new law that's going to affect in West Virginia called House Bill 2499. Well, this is something I think Kentucky needs to do, because otherwise we're going to have a lot of Kentuckians who are going to cross over to the border, be buying their guns and ammo from people in West Virginia, because they don't have to pay any sales tax. We could be helping Kentucky businesses if we pass that kind of a law here. Hint, hint, state legislature. I know we got a lot of good pro-gun people in the legislature getting rid of one who is not, and I hope we'll replace it with one who is. Now, uh, let's talk into our next thing, talking about Kentucky businesses. Kentucky businesses right now are hurting something terrible. Uh, Andy Bashir is coming out and on uh, TV in his press conferences saying, oh, Kentucky is really positioned to lead off in the recovery after this uh, you know, pandemic and the economy is bad. Well, let me tell you how bad the economy is. According to a report that came out this week from WKYT Television, they have a report that they have cited that Kentucky now ranks 50th as far as our economy goes right now. Then they use 35 different indicators to figure out which states ranked where. They use things such as uh, opportunities, the health of the economy, uh, annual income levels, employment participation. And right now we have 48% of Kentuckians who could be working who are just not working. Why is that? Because Andy Bashir continues to give the $300 bonus on top of the $600 unemployment check for a total of $900. And he is paying people to not work. And this does not work whenever you try it. If you want to encourage something, you subsidize it. What is he subsidizing? People not working. And he's got the Kentucky economy in last place. But he'll come out and tell you that it's great. He is twisting the facts. He's coming at this thing crooked. I mean, it's so twisted and it's so crooked. You could take Andy Bashir to take the cork out of a wine bottle. It's so twisted and crooked. Now, this leads us to our uh, final topic again, talking about Andy Bashir. Is uh, he has just been dealt a giant whipping by the United States Supreme Court. This week, the United States Supreme Court came out with a ruling, and it was about this Catholic organization that didn't want to violate its religious principles and beliefs to put foster kids into same-sex homes. And the United States Supreme Court said, that is your religious liberty, and that will be protected. This was done in a unanimous decision. 
rare thing for the court anytime, especially with this topic nowadays. Now, how does this relate to Kentucky? Well, the Kentucky government has said in three different laws that there will, there's this company that is called the Sunrise Children's Services. And this is Kentucky's oldest foster care and adoption agency. It has helped hundreds and hundreds, if not tens of thousands, of kids over the decades. And Andy Bashir is not renewing Kentucky's contract with them for their same religious convictions. Even though Kentucky Law 45A says that there will be uh, exemptions given for religious liberty. Kentucky Law 45, uh, 445 also says this. Also, the Kentucky state budget this year, which was House Bill 192, specifically said Governor Andy Bashir will give a religious exemption to Sunrise Children's Services. And yet, he has not. He is violating three different laws. Why is this still being allowed to continue? Uh, even though the Supreme Court has said, listen, you can't do this. The courts have ruled against him. Three different laws he is breaking by not giving them the religious liberty. Now, in response, the Kentucky General Assembly has sent a petition that was signed by uh, more than 70 House representatives and more than 25 of our state senators. And every statewide elected officer has sent a petition to the governor saying, Mr. Governor, we will uh, please obey the laws that were passed by the legislature, and let these people have their religious liberty. Obey the law that says specifically you will honor religious liberty with Sunrise Children's Services. Why is Andy Bashir not obeying these three laws? Why is Andy Bashir ignoring the petitions of the, the legislative branch and the other members of the executive branch? I'll tell you exactly why. Because a biblical principle has been violated. Notice what the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse number 11. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, it is fully set in the hearts of the sons of men to do evil. So what is it talking about here? It's like, listen, because an evil, there's no sentence. It's talking like when a judge issues a sentence. Because there is no sentence against an evil work, People are going to continue to do more evil. It actually encourages that. And here's the problem that we have. What happened last year when, can, when the governor violated the law? Uh, he violated the religious liberty by banning church, uh, and a, a court said that's illegal. He issued a travel ban, which violates the Kentucky Constitution. Another court said that that is illegal. He violated the freedom of assembly and the freedom of speech, saying there can't be protest against him. Another federal court said that is illegal. You are breaking the law. And what was the repercussion to Andy Bashir for doing all of these illegal things? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Nothing. What the state legislature has done is they said, listen, because the governor has abused his power, we're going to pass some laws that say governors, any governor from this point through all of the future are not allowed to do certain things. Well, let me ask you a question. Is that actually giving any consequences to the person who violated the law? To say you're not allowed to violate it again, you can't take away the people's rights like you did before. Let's say that you just got robbed and the person who robbed you has to go before the judge. And the judge tells the person who robbed you, you are not allowed to rob these people the way that you robbed them before. You are now free to go. Was there any consequences to the robber, the one who took what was rightfully yours, if all the judge says is, you're not allowed to rob these people anymore in the future? No, there's no consequences. There would be no justice. Andy Bashir faced zero consequences for violating, for robbing the people of their rights. Therefore, he is doing it again. He is breaking three laws. He is laughing at the state lawmakers. He is laughing at the courts because nothing happened when he did it the first time. And why then is Sunrise Children's Services having their religious liberty taken away and all these foster kids or kids who need adopting are going to be put in a hard time because they can't use this service? Because this biblical principle was violated in Ecclesiastes chapter number 8 and verse number 11. Because sentence was not executed, it is fully set in the hearts of the sons of men to do evil. 
State Treasurer Allison Ball. She's come out uh, many times saying that the governor is breaking the law. Uh, let me give you a quote that she just issued about this particular issue. This is, again, the words of State Treasurer Allison Ball. She said, the pattern of constitutional violations from this administration is alarming. And indeed it is. It's amazing how many of uh, rights he is violating, how many laws he is violating, how many articles in the Constitution that he continues to violate, and yet, what has been the consequence? So we have now this ruling from the United States Supreme Court dealing with this very type of topic that has just whipped Andy Bashir. Now this is on top of last week, a Kentucky court once again whipped... Andy Bashir saying, all of your mandates, they are illegal. They're unconstitutional. Everything that you have done, Andy, for the last year and a half has been officially ruled by the courts as illegal. And praise the Lord, it should have been done a lot faster, but I'm glad that the courts finally stepped in. And you know who else, in addition to the courts, has been whipping up on Andy I tell you, it's another Kentucky business. I don't know why, but we're highlighting Kentucky businesses a lot this week. There's a Kentucky coffee company that is called Brood. And when Andy Bashir said, I'm closing down businesses, even if it's your means of, of paying your, your bills, uh, of how you stay alive, paying your rent or your groceries, I'm closing you down. Well, this company did not close down. And they took Andy to court. And when they said, hey, I say you have to close down, they said, we want to stay open. And they, you know what? They won their case. And then when Andy said, well, everybody has to wear a mask if they come in there. And they're like, no, they don't. And they won their case. And Andy says, well, then you can only be open the hours that I say so. They said no. And you know what? They won that case. And then Andy said, well, you can only have certain numbers of people in there. And you know what? To get in, they said no. We'll let in all the people who we want. And they won that case. So this is a great uh, organization. I do not know why more uh, businesses in the state didn't follow this example because Brood, this coffee shop, won their case. The court said, Andy, what you're doing is illegal. So they stayed open, full capacity, full size, no limits, and have been able to stay in business. And they're now helping to fund and help protect other Kentucky businesses to stand up for their rights. And so to help Kentucky businesses, let me encourage, if you would like to, if you're a big coffee drinker, why don't you go to their website? It is Brood Company, that's BroodCO.com. And you can get, you can order coffee, get it delivered right to your door. I'm not a coffee drinker, but I know a lot of people are, and they'll go over to like Starbucks. You know, Starbucks is for every liberal, liberal anti-liberty, socialist thing that there is. So what? And now instead of funding them, why don't you fund a Kentucky company? I was talking to the owner of this. I said, Hey, I want to mention your company. Uh, I said, What if I can give people a discount? if they actually get something from you, and then you can use the money from the business to help other Kentucky businesses stand up for liberty. He said, great idea. So if you go to the uh, Brood website right now and you order your coffee to have it delivered to you, you go to the promo code, type in the word PATRIOT, and they'll give you a 10% discount, and you'll know not only are you getting some fresh brewed coffee, you're helping support a liberty business here in Kentucky who is helping support other liberty causes right here in Kentucky. So uh, that's a good business. Not forget about the Mingua Beef Jerky people. Again, these people are not a sponsor, not getting a cent or anything from this. Uh, I'm giving away 100% of the stuff that they gave, especially this pink hat. Lovely for other people, not lovely for me. Uh, so, And we're going to be giving that away at the Great Kentucky Shootout and Picnic on June the 26th starting at 11 a.m., and I hope that you'll be able to come out for that. And until next week, I'm Lee Watts for Patriot Point, and don't forget, liberty is not a spectator sport.